Hi, this is day 65 to one and this is another Buddy Read with Katie. Okay, so I am doing a very quick intro because I've just uh, got back from visiting. I've got some parcels you can see. I've already gone through that bag. Um, <laughs> but I have my suit on and I've got to go get ready for work. So unfortunately, I'm not actually going to get um this read during the daylight hours by the time i finish work it's going to be late at night uh but i might start only the flower nose tonight before i go to bed because this will be a reread for me i did buy this a couple of years ago now i think was it just last year surely not um let's have a wee check usually they have it in the front maybe they don't um I, whenever it came out, that's when I bought it, and uh, that's when I read it. So, um, 2022, so it was January 2022, and I think I got this, um, yeah, I think I got this like a couple of months, maybe the March, I think it was, something like that, March or April. So I read that um, last year, March, April. Uh, but these two I've picked up. I got this one first and then this one. So now I can actually read all three. Uh, what we're reading is Only the Flower Knows by um, Takarai Rito. Rito Takarai. And these are June manga titles. Um, there is a fourth one, which is a historical prequel to this series. But in terms of their story... Um, this is like their complete story so we're gonna just read these three one because i don't have the fourth one i don't know if katie does if she does have at it read the fourth one if you want um because as i've mentioned previously whenever i was picking these up i have read this as a scan back in the day and i didn't think we'd ever get it so i'm very happy that we did uh, so I do know the story, but it's just been such a long time. And then reading this one just made me go, oh, that's right. I love this. So I'm very excited to read this. But like I said, um, my soup is boiling. <laughs> You've got to get ready for work. So I will probably be checking in with you tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, I got to go. I got to go get ready. So good morning um, it is the next day. <laughs> I've got a bacon sandwich and a cup of coffee. Um, I did start this when I got home last night. I took it up to bed with me, but I, I literally got in about this far in my reread before I was like, you need to go to bed and sleep. Um, because I didn't actually go to bed when I got home last night. I just mindlessly scrolled. Mindlessly scrolled. Um, just as a way of decompressing from work. It's not like it's a really bad thing, but I just feel like that's something that my body needs or my mind needs and I try to get rid of that I try to think of other ways to um I had soup when I got home it was great and that's something I think I need to have more of this is just a health update I feel like I need to have like a little soupy thing at the end of the night to have and that kind of helps my stomach and makes me feel warm and makes me feel ready for bed um and I did have that but I still mindlessly scrolled for about an hour or so so I didn't get <laughs> this as I should have um, but yeah and I'm still only a little bit like this my plan is for today eat this drink this read this and tidy my house I say this every time but it's like a constant thing you, I mean anyone who has a house <laughs> knows it's a constant thing um, especially if you're away for a couple of days it just feels like you come back and you're like I need I can see dust that I didn't see before so I need to do a proper big clean of my house um and I feel like today is the day to do that and uh but I also want to read this so I'm going to intersperse a bit of tidying hoovering dusting cleaning things like that uh with my reading but I am going to read a little bit have something to eat read a little bit so I might check in with you once I've I might get completely engrossed and just read it all <laughs> And then be like, sack, sack the cleaning. I'll just do this. It's my day off. Um, although it's technically my day off, it's still not a day that I should take a full day off for just to read. Um, but I might. I might. I've got tomorrow. I've got tomorrow. Sir. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I um, 
I have plans, so I need to get things done. <laughs> but I want to just sit and read this, so I might just do that for this morning. Um, I also need to check my computer because there's a video that's needing uh, properly edited and it wouldn't export properly. And it's my 1330, so I need to get that done. And I also need to take a photograph for the thumbnail. So yeah, I should probably do that for this as well. <laughs> I'm so disorganized and hungry. So I'm going to eat this first. I'll check in with you when I've read some more. Where? What are you saying? Hmm? What are you saying? <laughs> you scratching the carpet. Is it too good? Does it feel too good? Oh. Oh. Purr, purr, purr. I'm not even touching you. You just love carpets, don't you? You just love being inside. Right. A wee bit of petting, a wee bit of ham, and then I'm sending you outside so I can keep reading. Okie doke. What's that on the floor? I know. I know. Oh, you do love carpets. Do you not get carpets in your house? You don't have carpets in your house? Oh, scratchy. Oh, scratchy, scratchy. Oh, so soft. So soft and fluffy. Yeah? Oh, you sound great when you're purring. <laughs> Is that nice? Is that nice? Oh, Poppy. Oh, Poppy. There we go. So now that I've had my um, obligatory cat visit for the day, um, she was sitting on the um, windowsill just staring <laughs> venomously at me. Until I opened up and said, all right, here you go. So I have finished uh, volume one. I've also got my video um, uploading and stuff like that. And I've got my um, thumbnail made and st things. So hopefully that'll be up on Patreon soon. And um, <laughs> I've not cleaned anything. But I just don't want to. I've just decided... Today is just me reading this. Now that I've started, I'm like, I, you need to finish it. Um, so this is going to be a very boring vlog. I might make cookies. I feel like I should because I have all the ingredients. Um, and a big tub of peanut butter to go through. So making more peanut butter cookies. And I can take some away with me if I, at the weekend, if there's any left. Um, anyway, reread of volume one done. I love it. I'm obsessed. <laughs> obsessed again it's like I love this story so much but I loved how even as soon as it starts there's things about it that just hit different um this panel made me pause because I was like oh yeah it's max of nostalgia an mp3 player with the little round button and the headphones wrapped around it and I owned one just like that. I still do. I have it somewhere in probably somewhere in this house actually. And it was a Philips one and it looks identical. Identical. <laughs> and a little flip phone with a camera and everything. It just made me feel like really nostalgic um, for that time period because everyone, everyone had them. And uh, there was something else that was like, oh yeah, it's oh yeah, the whole having to get um because the daily disposables was not really a huge thing until maybe around this time people started having the plastic ones a lot more and they, until then it was like you had to have the hard hard lenses <laughs> and uh it just made me laugh because that whole like having your glasses and then trying be like oh instead of getting glasses this time maybe I'll try and get the and I did it as well I did it around this time as well I was like oh um Maybe I'll try and get get some, you know. And I went for the soft ones because soft ones were available at that time. And um, and then my eyes were worsened and I had to get different ones for different eyes. And it was like, oh, because at one point my eyes were the same and it was okay because it didn't matter if it was a left or a right eye. And <laughs> oh, the nonsense. Um, and then there was another thing as well. Is it this one? Yeah, it's this blanket. I probably mentioned this before as well, but this blanket just gets, ugh, hits different. So I'm sure that lots of people have one of these in their house or, or have had one in their house at some point. A fleecy blanket with the wool detail around the edge just, just is like 
uh, things that everyone has, but then not everyone has. But if you've had it, you'd be like, oh, it's a blanket like that. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is, I haven't actually said what this is about. Uh, this is about Mizaki, who works at university as like a biology botany student. And Arikawa, who is a law student, but also is kind of a bit of an oddity because he's very smart but kind of has a an intelligence that doesn't always equate to social intelligence, I guess. <laughs> and he has this kind of encounter, brief encounter with Misaki at the university, and then another brief encounter at um, the train station, and then ends up having dreams about this mysterious Misaki, who within his dreams he seems to be in love with. And... Uh, and then ends up working at the lab where Misaki is. It's all very gentle and soft and um, plodding along at this point. But what I love is things like this, these details. Um, when I was an art student <laughs> many moons ago, ago um, I actually did um, uh, like printmaking. And one of the things that I loved was, um, even at that point in time, like 20 years ago, uh, antiquities and uh, how people would classify things and they would make these kinds of drawings and uh, I did printmaking but for lichen so it was um, samples of of lichen um, oh, I just loved things like that <laughs> um, so yeah this this is kind of an amazing series that I don't think the visual world really thought we were going to get in English and now we have it's amazing and it was originally published in 2011 in Japan, but we've got them from 2022. So it took 11 years, which is why we never thought we'd get it, because 11 years is a pretty long time to not get the, only the flower nose. But I'm just so 100% invested. I'm just going to be doing this today. Just decided. Uh, but I will. I think I will make some cookies. I think I will. Um... But let's open some of these, shall we? Let's let's open some packages. <laughs> See what else I've got. Um, we'll go with this one because this one came with this back. So that's the, the one that needs to be opened first, I think. I feel like while there is sunlight, I should probably just open all of them. Um, so I can check. But also see what's inside. <laughs> I kind of have a general idea. I know what this is. Let's see. Can I actually? Oh, the book is right there. Let's see. Oh, nope. I don't want to get the book. Ooh, yeah. I don't want to damage the book. Is really like stressing me out. <laughs> there we go. Should be able to get it now. Ja ja. So this is Kiss Me Liar Volume One, Zig, and this is an Omegaverse fiction. Jomu is an Omega whose life has been turned upside down by an alpha that is Keith Knight Pittman. While working as Keith's secretary, Jion Wu was surrounded and traumatised by dominant alphas at the orgy party hosted by Keith. On a cruise ship, Keith had blamed him for what happened and Jion Wu quit his job in consequence. But much to Jion Wu's surprise, Keith comes knocking on Jion Wu's door, begging him to return. Wordexcerpt.com, ages 18. So this was, um, yeah, printed by Amazon. That's how they did it. Um... They also had an audiobook version on uh, Kindle, Audible, was it Audible, for a while. I don't know if it's still there. Um, yeah, this is an interesting one. So copyright, uh, Soman Parker, 2018. Feels like, yeah, first edition, 2021. So this was a little while ago. Um... I don't know. I don't. This feels word excerpt. I'm not sure if this still is going. I don't know if they. 
actually still hold the license if they actually got the got the license properly. Um, there seems to have been some sort of issues with, is it, there was three companies that were publishing pros, BL pros. Um, I mean, it looks quite nice. I know that there was a different cover as well. And then there's some of, I need to keep a, like more of a check on what the pros, any kind of BL pros that's been published. So if you have a list, that would be great. Thanks. I'd love to, if I know I need to create one. But yeah, this is um, interesting and it is only volume one and I know that they're doing the, or they already have the web comic, but I think it's only just being made into English just now. Uh, so yeah, an Amigaverse book. i would seen this, um, I think in different formats. I think it was a hardback copy maybe. I'm not sure. I need to look into it because I can't quite remember, but when I saw this on Vinted for quite cheap, um, I thought may as well get it. Um, but like I said before, it was one that couldn't be um, delivered to my address because <laughs> for whatever reason. But yeah, Kiss Me Liar is one that I picked up for quite cheap. Shall we open some more? While I have the light, I think I will just open all of these. <laughs> but I won't open them all here, so maybe this is later on in the video. But I'm opening it now. Let's see what I thought. Oh, well, this is good. Um, so this is Golden Sparkle by Minta Suzumaru, who is one uh, that I love. This is the second one that um, I picked up in physical. This is the second one that's been published in physical. I have read this multiple times on Futekia before because it's anything Suzumaru Minta did was on Futekia first. And so I read it there and loved it so I'm very happy to have it in physical uh, I probably will just do a reread because it's a cute story and I want to read what I buy um, so yeah this is a uh, sublime title one shot so one and done which is quite good and it means that I'll feel good about it this is a story about a boy who is very naive very naive <laughs> but he ends up having a best friend um, at school and they end up um, maybe taking advantage slightly of his naivety <laughs> and teaching him a few things about um, sex because he doesn't really know very much about that uh, so yeah he's helping a bro out <laughs> giving a bro a hand <laughs> um, so yeah golden sparkle this is a really nice one. I'm really glad I got this. And I also got this for quite a good price. So around £5, £4 something. I, I don't know. I'll need to check exactly. But it's around that. And that's a really good price for one of these. So I'm very happy to add this to the collection. And I will uh, try and be reading this as soon as I can. So um, it's a bit later on today. Um, <laughs> it's dinner time. I'm going to go put the heating on. Because it's starting to be, it'd be a bit chilly. And it's super dark now because it's after 4 basically now by 4 30 it's pitch black outside so we've got very little very little time to actually enjoy any daylight um that's just how it is got a lovely image on the front really nice um this is just it's just nice it's just a nice story i'm just gonna go make something to eat and then continue reading <laughs> got a really boring reading vlog and I don't really have much to say other than this is great because I'm really enjoying myself. Um, I love the art. Takarai Rito's art is gorgeous. Um, I love the nostalgic quality of reading this story and what it means. There's a lot of backstory in this volume um, because we found out who this person was that was phoning Misaki and what his story was and we also get Misaki's backstory in terms of what his family situation is, which is quite sad. Um, and also the manipulation of this individual who has been part of his life for, for quite a long time now. And the power that that has when you interact with someone who's older and who is manipulating you. 
but it also has to do with what societal expectations are and internalized homophobia and all of those kinds of things um and i just love how arikawa just cuts through all that bullshit and is just like yeah whatever <laughs> he doesn't seem to have any kind of shock about his feelings from misaki or what he wants and desires there's no um there's no kind of frustration or uh wavering he is pretty pretty convinced of his feelings and and that the rightness of it um even though he is having this conversation with his friend about um <clears throat> when he's got a flu <laughs> he, he's he's constantly getting flus um and colds anyway when he's having this conversation with his friend about um wavering and being a little bit uh more emotional and not being able to handle anger and things like that that's that's separately from his his feelings for misaki with with the the fact that he may be bisexual um that was never like a sh a shock wasn't something that he questioned it wasn't something that he struggled over it was literally just like oh this person is really interesting and and oh this person i love or i have feelings for or i find beautiful or i want to be around that none of that was questioned he is 100 percent pure boy <laughs> completely like a uh, bisexual king if that is what he is because it's kind of interesting how little feelings of interest he had for his girlfriends or at least it's implied that he just is kind of like going along with it but with misaki it's more like an obsession um and it's very much a stronger feeling but yeah this was a good volume ended in a good way Ooh, oh yawn big yawn and then this cute little short at the end with the two of them being kids and <laughs> misaki's face is just pure joy of wow look at this thing this boy just made in front of me and um how cute they are together so cute so cute a little baby misaki um so yeah i'm gonna go make something to eat i will probably just have some ramen spicy ramen i need some spicy ramen um something warm uh and soupy and I'll probably fry up some vegetables to put in, uh, maybe we egg, <clears throat> something like that, some for some protein, um, and I put the heating on. And I'm just going to continue reading this. So this is going to be a very short and probably very boring vlog. I might make the peanut butter cookies though, because I will probably want something sweet uh, afterwards, and they they were delicious. <laughs> I had like two before I packed them all up in a tin and, and gave them away. Um, so yeah, I made all of these peanut butter cookies for someone else. But now I'm like, mm, I could make a whole new another batch and eat them over the next few days and take some whatever's left if I go traveling at the weekend. Uh, but yeah, mm, food first, heating on food first, then um, volume three. It's gorgeous, it's wonderful, I'm so happy, I'm so happy. This was always one of my favourites. Um, I like this one, only the flower nose, and also Hanaga Sakuka, Sakuka um, which is, does the flower blossom or bloom? One of those, bloom I think it is, um, which unfortunately we only got the first three volumes of, and I think there's only five or six um and they kind of came out around the same time and they both have interesting very similar main characters um and so i'm really glad that we have this all complete and so if junior manga would like to revisit that series and and republish them 
volumes one, two, and three because they're very difficult to get hold of. Um, Shoko Hidaka, is that who it is? Shoko Hidaka's. So a lot of people have real trouble trying to get hold of those volumes. They're super expensive secondhand. Uh, I'm very lucky and I have them, but I would like to have the rest of the series. So if they'd like to republish those first three volumes so that everyone else can get a copy and then continue with the series, that would be great. Thanks. I would very much appreciate it. Or if someone wants to do a license save, that would be good too. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, it's just amazing that Junior Manga actually eventually did get around to doing this i don't know how long it's been in planning and in the works but they seem to take forever um i'm not going to complain about their kickstarter <laughs> not i'm not i'm not but um yeah on to some food and and then volume three it's so good though guys it's so good it's one of my faves so i had a wee go at um making some peanut butter cookies and just one tray's worth. I'm not making a huge, huge batch. Um, but these have actually turned out, I think, better than the ones I made earlier. They're, well, I don't know, maybe. We'll see. They've got a nice bottom to them. Um, but we'll see about one. Let's just have a wee bite. Oh, they're still warm. Crunchy on the outside. Soft and chewy on the inside. Yeah, these are good. Mmm. I put a little bit more salt in this mixture. Yeah, these are good ones. Mmm. Yeah. So, just a little pile. Not a huge one. I still have a big bowl's worth of um, cookie dough. But I'll keep them in the fridge and maybe make some more tomorrow. Um... Or Friday to take away with me, but mm, I think I'll have a cup of tea and finish off the last volume. So I have now finished only the Flower Nose Volume Three, um, and I did say to Katie, <laughs> she's gonna. Be, I did say to Katie, no, no, just the there's just three volumes is fine. We don't need to read the fourth volume because that's like a historical one. Um, but now I really want to read it. <laughs> I don't know if Katie has it. She probably does. She's got everything. Um, but I, I really want to read it now. And so I don't think I can finish this vlog here. Um, also because as soon as I finished this volume, I was like, I wonder where I could buy it from. <laughs> I just got my phone out and started shopping. Um, I did not purchase volume four. But I did find it on eBay for a good price and put in a small bid. So, maybe I did? <laughs> um, I was going to get it anyway, right? Um, I was. I was going to buy it anyway. I was going to buy it anyway. It's going to happen at some point. I may as well get it this month. I mean, considering how much, <laughs> how many other things I bought this month. Why not? I mean, it might not arrive in November. So I might not get to complete this vlog. Because I feel like maybe I shouldn't actually do a sign-off um, until, until I've read that fourth one. So <clears throat> I will let Katie know. In fact, I will let her know as soon as I uh, finish filming this. I'm going to go have some more peanut butter cookies because that one I had was delicious. And I've got hot water, so I'm going to go have a bath. Um, and I I have a few other things that I'm reading, because I'm obviously doing my 1330 as well. Uh, so we'll see how much <laughs> um, I get done for that as well. Uh, but I, technically, I've added another three, which is great. So, um, oh, I've only got a few more to, to read, and then I'll have done 30 in this month. And in fact, I mean, I have a whole stack of new ones that I've just opened today. Um, so yeah, I'm doing very well with my 1330. I think I will complete it, especially considering I just read three volumes today. But now I'm like, I really need to read volume four. This was a lovely finish. It actually has like gorgeous artwork. Oh, Takarai Rito just, ah, oh, 
And this I do think is, you know, I, I, I know a lot of people really love Ten Count and I, I actually enjoy it. It's messed up, but I like that about it. Whereas this one was just a sweet, gentle little thing and I just love the atmosphere and all of the flowers and, oh, so good. And they are at that stage when they're starting to be um, building and more uh, sweet with each other and um, <clears throat> and their relationship really pretty much is like at that stage when they they feel like they love each other it's it's a very quick when it actually when they decide <laughs> that's them they've decided and then there's all these little extra bits and I was like hold on there's a bit missing and then I realized it's because it's in the other volume so it's not like their story it's not like all of their stories in this volume and then the, the fourth volume has just the historical bit it's a historical, but it also has some more of these guys. And I'm like, okay, so I need to read volume four. <laughs> but this is, as you can see, another February 2023. So this is another 2023 release that I've I've read. Um, I've been kind of shocked at how many, this month especially, 2023 releases I've been reading. So I I'm, I'm, feel like this is me just read, reading um a lot of newer titles which is great it's great i feel like i'm you know not just the the out of print collector i'm starting to become um better at well there's not so much to collect out of print anymore i only have a, a few more volumes to get but um yeah i've been lax on getting newer titles but this one is a 2023 release and i didn't actually realize that i thought it came out last year but there we go. <clears throat> um, so yeah, this is lovely. This is gorgeous. This is sweet. This is wonderful. I need volume four. Give me volume four. I'm gonna I'm gonna go text Katie now. <laughs> Say sorry. Uh, can we can we um, extend it to volume four? Have you got volume four? Because I'm gonna go get volume four. I need to. I need to. I need to have this. I didn't realize that volume four would make it feel complete. I thought, oh, it's just the first three volumes. That's fine. But no, guys, you need to get volume four. So if this is the end of the, the vlog, thanks for watching. I know it's not very exciting, but I had a great time. <laughs> Take care and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Um, uh, but if not, you'll see the next clip, which is probably me opening a package and be like, yay! <laughs> uh, yeah, cue that clip. So this is me opening a package. Yay! <laughs> um, I got back, uh, from being away. Um, I've made my sandwich, um, the egg sandwich, and I have a package here. Um, usually I don't, I like do it properly and everything. Um, but I'm... I'm not going to because my thing stairs. I'm just going to open this um, and see what it is. Hopefully, this is actually what I think it is. Um, yes, it is. Uh, so, what did I get? Of course, obviously, I've got um, at the flower capital, and this is the junior manga one. Um, I think I got it for £7, which is really good. It's a really good um, price. Um, so I can finally, <laughs> finally read this because it does say also includes a short story featuring Misaki and Arikawa from Only the Flower Knows. So this is kind of the reason because uh, there's this story, um, which I will enjoy, which is the kind of historical prequel. And then there's the short story with these guys in it which is kind of the point of this whole vlog so i may as well it's also the reason why i haven't filmed my a uh, haul video yet because today's what 28 um and i would have liked to have filmed it but i knew this was coming but also i knew i wasn't going to be here so this might have arrived on saturday uh, which would have been the twenty uh, fifth, which would have been perfect for me to to film, but I was away, so I uh, have to open this today. But I probably won't have time to film my 
haul video before I go to work and I'm not sure if I'm going to have time tomorrow. Anyway, I will be reading this at some point. <laughs> Probably today, maybe tomorrow. Um, and what else did I get? You may as well see. Cha -cha. This is another Aki Aoi, who I think was a... Did she do the Entangled? Something says 100 grasses? That one. Entangled with you? I think that's the same one. Is it? I think it is. Um, and this is Tum Tumasaki ni Korozu. Korozu? Korozu? <laughs> I have no idea what this is about. Absolutely none. It says it's a Shonen Ai slice of life manga. What does that mean? <laughs> What's that when it's at home? It's got lots of plants and things on the front, which is very much her style. If you know, you know. So yeah, I have no idea what this is about. It's probably going to be very good. But So I could read this for my 1330. Um, but yeah, very nice. Very nice. Is this also a 20... 23? Let's see. Yeah, April 2023. What about this one? July 2023. So yeah, I've got two very nice um, Jiri mangas and they were both seven pounds each, which is really good. And uh, the upper limit <laughs> of my goal for um, spending on new titles. So yeah, I will check in when I've um, started or finished this volume. So it is the next day. Um, today's the 29th. Whoa! Um, <laughs> I didn't show. There was um, um, a little thank you note from the seller and a, a cool bookmark, which I think is really... I just realised they've got little things written on them. Disco classics. Heart of Gold, Airplane Mode, oh. Um, so yeah, I did start this last night, but I was so knackered. I had to have a bath and everything, and I've just got back from Inverness. The big smoke. <laughs> and I'm really hungry, and I need to have something to eat before I go to work, because I'm working as well. So I've got some um, asparagus, mashed potato, and um, like salmon and hollandaise. Look at that. <laughs> It's going to be delicious. Uh, I'm very healthy and balanced. So I'm going to have something to eat. Uh, but I am watching some Meg with books. See, I've got some Meg with books on. Um, so I'm going to have something to eat. I'm going to move this out of the way. <laughs> but I am, I, I will check in properly when I've read, well, probably the whole of this, if not just the first, you know, like prequel story, the historical one, because you know I like that. Um, but yeah, it's very much like, oh yeah, oh yeah, uh, or at least I was until I fell asleep last night. Uh, so yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm going to eat something and I will probably check in with you. Oh, if I'm honest, it's probably going to be tomorrow morning. <laughs> it's probably going to be tomorrow morning because I'm going to be finished late tonight. Today is Wednesday. I want to say it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday today. So yeah, I will be probably checking in tomorrow. Today's a bit of a dud day, but I had to go to the hospital. So it is what it is, just for a checkup. Uh, so yeah, this is going to be delicious. And I will, yeah, read a little bit more and then uh, finish this vlog. So good morning. It is the next day um, and I have finished. <laughs> I could have, because I was still reading the historical bit last night before I went to sleep. Um, so I could have updated you a little bit earlier today, but I was like, no, I just want to stay in my bed where it's nice and warm because it is quite cold here. Just now we've got a bit of a cold snap. Um, but I have now completed this. So I have now completed the whole series. Ah, um, so this one is at the flower capital, which is like also part of only the flower knows. So it's separate, but you really should have it together. So if I, if I get to the bit where... Yeah, this is it. I opened it right on this page. So this is, this is still, this part here is still only the flower nose. And then this part is the historical prequel story. And I think it's really interesting um, 
the way that the way that BL has kind of evolved, BL was like made for many reasons, but one of the reasons was because people enjoy reading stories uh, of star-crossed lovers, and if you have, that's why historicals are so well liked, is because historically. There are more areas for conflict within your story. So um, class and wealth and um, hierarchical position and um, race and religion and these kinds of things, which in modern contemporary uh, stories and society in general is less of an issue. More and more people are having relationships with people who historically, if they were you know, together and they interacted, you know, 100 or 200 years ago, they would not be together uh, or they would find it very, very difficult due to societal pressures. Um, and that's why historicals are good for uh, the girlies who like the conflict, <laughs> who like the drama um, and who also like the heartbreak. So this is the other aspect. So BL stories, um, I I wouldn't say mostly nowadays, we don't come across. I'm trying to think of any modern 2023, you know, like releases where the two people don't end up together. Like I hate watching a movie and the two main you know, the main couple don't end up together and I don't walk out the cinema with a happily ever after feeling because fuck that shit. <laughs> I don't want that in my cinema going, I need I need the happily ever after. And that's maybe why happily ever after stories are more prominent. Whereas in BL, I feel like like we explore different things now, but it, we there was an exploration previously as well. And that's I think it's good to acknowledge that sometimes in the past, in, in the BL world, we had quite a few stories and they were mostly historical where two people could not be together and it didn't end with a happily ever after. And it's quite rare now to have that. And I'm kind of thinking of like Hybrid Child. And you know, if you know, you know, <laughs> not all of Hybrid Child, but just the specific story that broke everyone's heart in Hybrid Child. That was like the, oh, <laughs> and it was so impactful that it, it was the, the launch pad really for Shinkiku Nakamura to be able to have a lot more success with Jinjo Romanchika and therefore Sekai Chihatsukoi and therefore make all the sales, get more popular, make more sales, get more popular and to become the kind of stalwart uh, seller that she is in Japan. She is huge, massive. She shifts numbers. And she started with a really um, not terribly well received uh, historical adventure story. And then she went on to uh, Hybrid Child. And that, that really was like the launch pad for her. And it's I think mainly due to that one um, kind of element to the story, which was that it was a star-crossed lovers and they couldn't be together. And it ended in heartbreak. And heartbreak can be impactful and can make it easy for you to become a successful... It's, it's emotional manipulation and it's most consumer-based. And I'm not averse to it because if someone can elicit some emotion from me, I know I'm still alive. <laughs> I'm still alive. Um, and so I think that's why when it ca came to Rihito Takarai, she was doing this and then the this comes out along and you're thinking, oh, is this story finished? And she's moved on to another story and you start reading the story and you get invested in the story. And then right at the end, you realize, oh, it's connected. And it was such an impactful one because one, it was heartbreaking, but also two, it was connected to the story we had been reading and it was part of this um whole uh story at you know as one big unit rather than a standalone even though it was advertised at the flower capital as a standalone slash kind of connected um but you didn't see 
how it was connected or in what way it was connected until near the end, um, you know, right at this part, point, you're like, oh, oh, because at that point you hadn't really figured it out. But yeah, I remember when it first was being um, made and it was being scanlated and people were reading it because I'm not going to lie, we did. And it was, it was that whole, oh my God, what? So it was that shocking historical connected to the modern contemporary story. Um, and then we got more extra of their contemporary story at the end. And when it comes to things like that, a historical, um, emotionally charged historical story connected to a modern romance, it's really giving me, um, uh, I want to say like, um, what's the word? I had to look it up. I had to check with the Goodreads. <laughs> it's giving me literary fiction vibes. Do you, if you, do you get that? I mean, I don't know if that's... So, for example, um, Taylor Je Jenkins Reid, she did The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. But the story has a modern and historical um, section. And the, a lot of stories that are emotionally manipulative for commercial purposes <laughs> do have that in literary fiction. They have a sort of historical connected to the modern world. It's not something new. It's been done many, many a time. But I think this is really interesting because this is it in, in manga form. This is it in, um, you know, it's emotionally charged. It is heartbreaking. It is wonderful. It is beautiful. But it's also... Um, you can see the connection because this story wouldn't exist if this story didn't exist and the relationships in this story wouldn't have so much gravity if this story hadn't happened and I think that's very much literary fiction and um, you know <laughs> I hate to say this but it's kind of like generational trauma and the impact of generational trauma <laughs> on individuals um which is very deep and maybe that's more me reading more into this than um than it warrants but I feel like Rihito Takarai is the kind of creator that she would think about this when she wants to be frivolous she can be but when she wants to be deep she is you know very good at it and she doesn't um She's not like heavy handed with it, I don't think, because that's me. Like, is it a stretch? Is it not? I'd love to know what your perspective is. Um, I will I will see what Katie thinks. But yes, I have now completed it. I'm really happy that we got to do this as a buddy read because it's one of the one of the titles that I thought would, we would never get in print. Um, and so to have the full complete set and to enjoy this. Uh, was wonderful. The story of the two of them at the at the end was also massively impactful and emotional because you then have this story um, and the conclusion of their story, you have to get this. This is a full set. I know this is only the Flower Nose 1, 2 and 3, but you need to get this to be able to understand their story fully. You can't just read these three, <laughs> which was my mistake because I hadn't read it in ages. So you need to have this fourth volume. It is a four volume series. It really should have a number four on it. Um, because you get to read this story and then what happens at the end for their story, uh, Arikawa and Misaki. You just, it's much more impactful. It's like that coming full circle. What couldn't happen, happens. And that's the difference and that's what the, the fact that historical stories with heartbreak work and that's why modern stories work because what couldn't be possible in the past is possible now and what is possible now is not possible in the past and it depends which side of the coin of romance you fall on do you enjoy your happily ever afters or are you okay with heartbreak and and devastation <laughs> and in in a lot of literary fiction you get both and that's what i liked about this so yeah <laughs> Um, I'm gonna have a cheese scone and a jammy donut. These are really good jammy donuts. I've got my coffee. I went to M&S food court yesterday and I got my usual order of cheese scones 
and Percy Pigs and um, M&S grapes. White grapes in M&S just taste different. They're just, I don't know if it's the variety that they choose, but it's really good grapes. And then I saw these jammy donuts, I thought I'd give them a go. And they are far superior <laughs> to normal supermarket ones. And that just shows it's like M&S does food and you're like, this is not just, this is not just a, a jammy donut. This is an M&S jammy donut. And actually it's 100% correct. M&S food is, is is a slightly superior. <laughs> I don't know about Waitrose because I've never actually bought anything in Waitrose, but M&S I have and it is. And it's not that much more expensive, but it's just that, especially with the way that the prices in the supermarkets have gone up. Um, you know, if you can get something. And I got the grapes for a reduced price, so actually they would have been around the same price, if not slightly cheaper, actually, than a normal supermarket. And then you're getting much better grapes. <laughs> anyway, my cheese corn is going to be brilliant. Um, I, uh, I'm really happy that I got to do this with Katie. Um, so hopefully she liked this as well. Yeah. And hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully this is an okay vlog. It probably is a bit crazy and a bit over the top and a bit weird and, you know, the usual, not, not a normal, maybe, maybe this is my norm though. Um, a very weird one with a big break in, in between because I had to wait for this. So yeah, I read these, they were great. And then it was just like, no, I need to get this. And I managed to get this for such a good price. So yeah, very happy. Hopefully this vlog is all right. And if you haven't picked up Only the Flower Knows, I highly, highly recommend it. It's Rihito Takarai. And she is a wonderful artist and a very good storyteller. Uh, no matter what your thoughts of 10 count are. <laughs> This is the OG one that we all fell in love with before 10 Count. Um, I love 10 Count. It's brilliant. It's messy. But this one is just special. It has a special place in my heart. So um, hopefully you are tempted to pick it up if you haven't already. And if you have, then you'll understand how much uh, affection I have for it. So yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, take care. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.